So the Lexington Stakes is our last significant derby prep. I think it's basically the last. I mean, we got, what, the Bathhouse Row, but I don't even think that counts. So uh, anyway, the Lexington, to be run Saturday at Keeneland, it is the 10th race. It's run at a mile and a 16th for three-year-olds. And we take a look at this field. Um, I'm a little stunned this race isn't run in Florida because we've got a lot of Florida shippers. Uh, we've got, um, I noted them on the next page, you'll see, but uh, Secret Chat, Dilger, uh, Hades, How's Your Ratitude, and uh, to an extent, Ever Do It, are all coming from Florida. So uh, this is uh, <laughs> surprising this race isn't run at Gulfstream. Uh, some of the more prominent ones, of course, Hades, we remember. Uh, I guess they're going to make one last-ditch effort to get him in. They won the Holy Bull, uh, kind of bombed out in the Florida Derby, but uh, they're going to bring him back short and see if he can uh, scoop some points and uh, and back into the Derby. We've got Encino, who scratched out of the bluegrass, which uh, is probably a good move. Uh, he's got a softer field here, and I think this is a horse on the come. Uh, Liberal Arts is also taking another st uh, shot after... Um, after a tough Arkansas Derby, he had a lot of trouble in that race, and uh, uh, so they're going to just uh, give it one last-ditch effort. And I heard the owners talking about it, and, you know, this is sort of their dream, like many horses, to get one in the Derby. Uh, so Liberal Arts comes back, as well as Lucky Jeremy, uh, who ran in the, um, um, in the Jeff Ruby and uh, didn't run bad. Uh, on the front end, always a big, uh, a tough proposition at a mile and an eighth, uh, at, tur at Turfway on synthetic, but uh, I thought he ran a, a pretty good race um, and uh, just was no match for, for endlessly, but then again, nobody was that day. So we take a look at him and, and we'll, we'll go through him one at a time. As I mentioned, Lucky Jeremy, I think, uh, is a little better than just um, a New Mexico horse. Um, I, he has shown to me that uh, he does have some, uh, some grit, likes to compete, and um, I think he's probably going to get on the front end here, would be my guess. I, I think they'll just try to wire this field. Uh, it's going to be a tall order from the 10 hole, especially when you got Hades to the inside, as well as some other significant early pressure. But um, he's a horse, I think he's up to it. And I, I like the way this one's uh, going. And um, I, I think he's just going to try to take them all the way and uh, may use up a little too much energy early. But uh, yeah, I think this horse can hang in there for the bottom of the exotics. I don't see him as a win candidate, but um, he's one to think about. Uh, footprint is uh, a Kenny McPeak. And again, you know, I have to say it every race, you just never know uh, with Kenny McPeaks. He's uh, been lingering in, in the allowance races, uh, and then they, they put him in the Jeff Ruby, and uh, he didn't uh, he didn't follow through with a whole lot. But uh, this horse does have some quality. I'm not sure he's got the will to win. That's kind of the thing that uh, bothers me a little bit about him. But I think he can run in this field, and he looms a, uh, a logical uh, contender for probably underneath for the try of the super. But uh, I think he's one that you need to consider. Now, Hades is coming out of Florida for the first time. And I did not like that Florida Derby at all of Hades. I think they tried to raid him, uh, which makes sense when you're dealing with fierceness on the front end, of course. Um, don't want to get uh, sucked into a duel with him, but there's the rub right there. If you're not that confident in your horse, um, you, you know, I, I, I think it, it speaks to perhaps some limitations this horse may have. Uh, I think they're going to put him back on the lead here, but note, <clears throat> Excuse me. Note that they did skip the Fountain of Youth between the Holy Bull and the Florida Derby to give this horse a little more time. And now you're bringing him back short. And uh, after a, a pretty lousy effort in the Florida Derby, now you, you could say, okay, well, he didn't run a whole lot, so maybe he'll it won't matter too much that's true to a degree but I think what it was more than anything is he he didn't have the short stretch uh that he did in the holy bull and I think that's really the 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 issue and I, I just think this horse is uh outside of Florida I don't know that he stacks up and I think the price is going to be short he's turning into kind of a wise guy horse so I don't want him uh how's your attitude I haven't seen enough out of him to show me 
that he's ready to uh, to be on the stakes field uh, and compete with these horses. I just don't think he's good enough. So he, uh, he he's he's a toss. Ever do it? Same thing. I mean, this horse is just he's by Gary D out of successful appeal. His pedigree screams one turn, and he has not factored in any race. Uh, around two turns, uh, even, and he, I just don't think he belongs here, and I think it's wishful thinking. Uh, so he would be a complete toss. He's the easiest toss for me in this group. Now, secret chat, I think you can conditionally use uh, for underneath. I think this one, uh, getting around two turns, is going to benefit, but I'm just not sure about the class level to handle the top horses in this race. Uh, but so that's why the asterisk is there, uh, so, or it's mainly to note that he's he's coming from Florida, but uh, you'll see on the next page. I think you could conditionally use him, but I, I uh, and I think two turns is going to improve his chances to a degree. But I like the uh, the, the top three in here. I think are just too good for him, so uh, he would be underneath for me. Now the big question in this race, of course, is the wine steward. We haven't seen him since the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, and they're pretty much rolling the dice on this one race. Well, why has he been away for so long? That's the first question uh, uh, that I would have. And um, I don't think his tab looks bad. Certainly Mike Maker, you know, knows what he's doing. Uh, but we've seen all the horses they brought for one prep. Uh, they, haven't fa- they haven't fired, they haven't factored. And um, I just think it's a really tall order. Now this is a soft field, that's true. And this horse likes to win and is tough. And I love that about the wine steward. So if anybody could perhaps uh, come off the bench and win this race, I think he can do it for sure. Um, I'm thinking he's probably more likely for second uh, or third, but he is certainly a prime win candidate in here. And if he runs his race, I think he's good enough to win. Uh, Dilger is by Lope de Vega, so I think two turns is going to meet this horse between the eyes. Uh, I don't think he's fast enough to beat the top three, but again, another horse I think you can conditionally use uh, in the bottom of the exotics. Now, we come to our two prime players here. Uh, Encino, uh, I really, you know, it, it was, he's interesting. It shows what two turns can do for a horse because... Uh, at sprints, he was kind of seemed to be floundering a little bit, but once they put him around two turns in the Bataglia, he really woke up and ran a, a really good race. And I think it's logical to expect a move forward here. I think Brad Cox was was uh, uh, weighing the risks of you know why go into the bluegrass against uh, against Sierra Leone who they run the same way, and Sierra Leone's probably a little further on. So give him a chance to, in a softer field, to maybe get his bearings and build off of the Bataglia. And so I think this makes perfect sense here. And Encino has to be considered uh, one of the prime win candidates in here. Now, Liberal Arts was a disappointment in the Arkansas Derby. That's true, but he also had trouble. And his jockey put him in a really bad place early on, and he just didn't recover recover from it. Now, he kept running, and you can say that about him. I think he was a little keen to get going, and perhaps he may be a horse who's getting out of that closer mode and moving more into a stalker, which would signal some improvement. This horse improved from one race to the next at two. He he is appearing to be in a three-race pattern, so I think it's logical that he's going to run a big one here. And uh, I think, you know, given the trouble and whatnot and the fact that this is his third start of the year, he might be able to overcome coming into this race a little short. Uh, I like liberal arts in this spot. To me, he looks like the one most logical to run a big one and take this one down. So if we go to our wagering strategy, um, I'm going liberal arts. I think he's um, he's the one to me that looks like he's going to pop and uh, run a big one, and they'll need it to get him in the Derby. So uh, no excuses if he doesn't. But I like Liberal Arts. I'm going with him. Uh, I think the t- the logical three are the Wine Stewart, Encino, and Liberal Arts, of course. Uh, the Wine Stewart, I certainly would think, if he runs his race, he can win this for sure. Uh, and then Encino, I think, is on the come and improving. Uh, but the problem is he does run the same way liberal arts does. So you actually have the same problem he would have had in the bluegrass, 
running against Sierra Leone. Uh, so it, to me, it's those three. So I'm going to go with an exacta with nine on top with two and eight, and then we'll box them. Uh, so in case one of them or the other wins, uh, but I think we're safe in doing that. Then we'll do a trifecta with liberal arts on top, wine steward and Encino in second. And then we'll add in, uh, we'll add in lucky Jeremy because I think he can hang around, uh, and we'll, and we'll throw footprint in there as well with, for the Kenny McPeak factor. So, uh, then we'll box two, eight, nine, because I think that's the most logical one, two, three finish. And then we'll do a saver try with Encino on top, wine steward and Encino in second. And then we'll take secret chat and Dilger and we'll use them for the value play. So if we get our, uh, are nine, uh, two or eight with one of them finish, we get a nice payout because probably the odds are going to be pretty short on our top three. But um, I, I can't really see a horse who's going to upset the apple cart with a big race. Um, it, you know, you do have some vulnerability from those top three. Probably the wine steward and liberal arts may have a little bit more than Encino does. But I think the talent is a little better than perhaps uh, Encino has shown so far. Uh, so it's a little shaky. Uh, I'm not going to deny that for a minute. But I think uh, liberal arts to me looks like the one who's ready to run a big one, particularly when you consider the shape of the race. And there's a fair amount of horses who are going to be up uh, knocking heads on the, uh, in, in the early stages. So it should set up pretty well for late runners. And that's where you get liberal arts to take this one down.